Today we're taking a look at these NBA matches, which are happening on Wednesday, November 2, 2022, and giving you our match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. The Wizards have lost 4 of their last 5 games, and 2 of their 3 road games. They aren't playing well offensively, especially on the road where they are averaging less than 110 points per game. They've struggled with their three-point shot, their rebounding hasn't been as good in recent games, and they've been very careless with the ball. The 76ers have done a good job defensively, holding opponents to 43% shooting from the field in their last three games. Their defensive rebounding has been good, and they've done a great job forcing turnovers, with the team averaging 1 steals per game in their last 3 games. They are holding opponents under 105 points per game at home, and will keep Washington's offense in check. The 76ers haven't been as good offensively, but they picked up the pace in recent games, averaging more than 114 points per game in their last 3 games. They shot the ball well from three-point range during the stretch, and they've well on the offensive glass, which will lead to extra scoring opportunities. With the Wizards allowing opponents to shoot over 50% from the field in their last three games, while giving up close to 120 points per game, they will have a hard time SLO 0 win down the 76ers, so go with Philadelphia to cover the spread. Conventional wisdom says the over will hit again, just like Monday night, with a total of 216, eclipsed by 13 points. Tonight's total of 218.5 has been adjusted for the lack of Joel Embiid. Big point totals from Maxi, Harden, and Beal may be expected, but Porzingis's 32 was a pleasant surprise for over betters. I am of the belief that Philly will continue their run of printing money for over betters, with their recent form of over is 4-1 in the 76ers' last five games following an Austrian shillings win. Make it 5-1 in the last six. Take the over 218.5 points. Cleveland Cavaliers vs Boston Celtics. Make no mistake, the Cavaliers will be serious contenders in the Eastern Conference this year, with the addition of Mitchell. But I think the Celtics will be laser-focused on getting some payback after losing last week at home to the Cavs. The Celtics now play with the confidence and swagger that comes with being the defending conference champs, and they will take this as a challenge to beat a good team on the road. They may have taken their eye off the ball late in the game game last week in their loss to the Cavs, but they WONT let that happen again. I also expect them to turn the screws and up the defensive intensity. Take the Celtics here to cover the spread. As proven when these two teams played on Friday, both can't score a ton of points, and neither team's defense was all there against each other. The game was 132-123 for 255 total points, while in Cleveland's games this season, they are averaging 227.8 ppg. Boston, meanwhile, is averaging 231.16 ppg, as their offense is clicking while their defenses have struggled. Meanwhile, Cleveland is 4-2 in hitting the over, while Boston is 3-3. Along with that, Boston ranks 13th in pace at 99.5, while the Cavs ranks 15th at 99.1, as both teams can play quickly and score fast breakpoints, which is why I like the over here. New York Knicks vs Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks are at the end of a challenging five-game road trip. They have struggled in their last two games, losing by eight points to the Bucks, and were clobbered 139-109 against the Raptors on Monday night. The Knicks are home after a road track and have yet to lose at MSG, where they are a perfect 3-0. Furthermore, the Hawks are going to have trouble against an outstanding defense. The Knicks are limiting foes to only 107.7 points per 100 possessions, ranking them 6th, while the Hawks are conceding 109.8. I expect the Knicks to out-rebound the Hawks as well. Atlanta has a negative rebounding margin and has been out-rebounded by a large margin in two straight games. The Knicks rank 2nd in NBA in rebounds per game. 
take New York Knicks minus two points. These defenses have been brutal in their previous three games, as well as the Hawks are giving up 124.7 points per game, while the Knicks are allowing 123.7 points per game in that span. One number that is critical to success is the assist-to-turnover ratio, as teams are passing the ball without turning the ball over, and that leads to more points. Atlanta is fourth in the NBA this season with a 2.03 ratio, while New York is ninth with a 1.88 ratio heading into this game. The over has hit in each of the previous five Hawks games, and in five of the last six Knicks games, so go with the over to hit in this game. Miami Heat vs Sacramento Kings. I will be taking the Miami Heat, minus 6.5, in this matchup, as the Heat are the better overall team. They could win this game if Fox was playing, but he's listed as out, which will hurt the Kings. According to Dunksandthrees.com, the Kings have the 23rd highest adjusted defensive rating, as they will allow Miami to score consistently throughout this game. Miami has struggled to make shots early in the year, but the Kings are allowing their opponents to shoot 48.9% from the floor, which is the highest shooting percentage surrendered in the league. Miami will knock down open shots and continue to pull away throughout this game. Miami is also shooting 34.8% from behind the three-point arc, which is the 18th highest percentage in the NBA. They have the skill to knock down shots, and I don't see Jimmy Butler or Tyler Harrow allowing their team to lose in this situation. Miami is also the better defensive team, as they are giving up the 11th least amount of points, and they are holding their opponents to the 17th lowest shooting percentage in the NBA. The Kings won't be able to score enough points without Fox on the floor, and they will struggle on the defensive end regardless. Miami is the better overall team and they will turn this season around in this one. Pick the Miami Heat and lay the points, minus 6.5. Both of these teams have high scorers in their starting roster. The Kings have three players that have a very high potential to each score above 20 points in this game, including Mitchell, Murray, and Hewitter. The Heat also has scorers amongst them and have been pretty good at attacking the basket this season. Butler and Adebayo will be the main scorers for the Heat if Harrow is out, however, if Harrow plays, that trio will be able to keep the score close to what Sacramento does. In their first game of the series, they covered the over at 227 points, after they combined for 232 points. Butler has been clutch with his shooting, while Adebayo has been successful down under and able to score points and make room for outside shooters. With Sacramento scoring heating up and their ability to punish turnovers and convert them to points, they will cover the over again. Take over 227.5 points.